this Wednesday night prayer and praise service. So good to see each of you in the house of the Lord. And uh, good to have the Sankeys all the way back from Florida. They've made the trip. They're recovering. And uh, we're grateful that they are here. And uh, all of you, we're just glad that you're in the service tonight. Let's bow our heads. Let's invite the presence of the Lord. Father, what a joy it is to gather into this sanctuary with your people and Lord, we're asking that you would come and do your work among your people tonight. We open up our own hearts and our minds and, and allow you to accomplish your plan and purposes in them. We don't know every need represented here, but we're grateful tonight that you do and you know the needs and you know how to help and, and uh, give encouragement and strength and, and whatever the needs may be that are represented here. You are the answer, the source uh, of help for us. So, Lord, I pray that you'll help us to focus our attention on you tonight, accept our worship, and we'll certainly give you praise in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Let's join in the singing. Brother Tallman comes to lead us tonight. Get your hymnals and turn to page 220. 220. My devotional reading today took me to John chapter 3. It was interesting as Jesus was speaking with Nicodemus uh, about being born again, and he was trying to explain to him the difference between being born of water and born of the Spirit. And that's probably the first time Nicodemus ever even thought of that concept, and he had a little hard time grasping it, but I think he got through spoke with him. But in that chapter, we obviously see the love of God. For God so loved the world that he gave. So I'm going to sing about that such love tonight. And I hope it will remind you of his love for your heart and for you tonight. Amen.
explode, doesn't it? Get your chorus books. Turn to chorus 101. 
concluding service, the Lord would, would help in that convention and uh, also be with Daryl as he travels home uh, this evening. Was there any doubt that Daryl would come back tonight? I don't think there would be. <laughs> so let's pray for him as he as he travels home. Any other spoken requests you'd like to mention as we pray today? Sister Alberson. All right, let's remember uh, Marlene's son. So this would be Janet's nephew. Uh, he's also in Kuwait with the military. So let's remember him. Uh, remember him. And his name is, you said? Cody. Cody. Let's remember Cody as well. That's uh, serving the military. All right, any other spoken requests you'd like to mention? Iron Dad has a pet scan tomorrow to determine whether or not Kendra's All right, let's do remember Byron's dad, I'm sorry I did not have that on the list, but let's do continue to remember Brian's dad, Byron's dad rather, and uh, facing the future, the unknown, and uh, I'm so grateful that God is already there in the future. He lives in the eternal present. <clears throat> and uh, so let's pray. Let's pray for Byron's dad. Patty, you had a request? Uh, there's an important court date from uh, Liam Page. All right, let's remember this. <clears throat> this important court date for Liam, the Lord is able to undertake in, in those affairs. Any other, any other requests? All right, let's pray for him. Yes, go ahead, brother. Don't you mean all the birds and the sister wife and the pastor? All right, let's remember the birds family. I also saw on the internet uh, that uh, the Rains um, mother passed away. This would be, I guess, um, uh, let's see, what's, what was the guy that was the PR director at VBS? Don Davis. Don Davidson's wife's mother passed away. And if I'm remembering correctly, uh, her dad just passed away just uh, within the last month or two, maybe. And so I know that family is grieving as well. So let's remember the Rains family and the Burge family. Thank you for that request. Linda. All right, a spoken request for, uh, for Linda tonight. The Lord knows about that request. Let's also remember um, Sister Byer, which is a reparable sister. <clears throat> sister Cease needs our continued prayers. And uh, the Lord knows all about that, that physical need. And if David, David's gone on, on a work trip, let's remember him. So remember the spiritual needs connected to this church and uh, in this community. The Lord, the Lord knows all about them, doesn't he? And uh, he's interested in every one of them. So let's pray for the spiritual needs. Let's pray for our nation, those in authority over us, and, uh, and all of the decisions that have to be made at a federal, state, and local level. So many decisions and so many uh, policies that are being created and, so many things that can affect uh, Christianity and, and so forth. And so let's pray for all these that are in leadership over us. Maybe you have unspoken requests you'd like to mention by an upraised hand. God knows every one of those needs. I know the Winklers have requested prayers for Keith as well that they've been in contact with. And uh, so let's continue to pray for, for Keith tonight. All right, well, let's kneel together, and Brother David will lead us in prayer. Let's join him. Let's begin with thanking the Lord for something, and then let's bring our petitions to him as he uh, invites us to do so. Let's pray together. Oh, Lord, we do bow in your presence tonight, and we thank you for the opportunity that is ours tonight to come into your presence. We give you praise, and we give you thanks tonight, Lord. You're a God who is here tonight. You're a God that is present, a God that is that is able, a God who, who sees and hears and understands. Lord, we thank you. We thank you. Oh, Lord, we praise you. You are enough for us. You know every need and every circumstance and every situation, Lord, the requests that were made to you tonight, we know every one of them. But Lord, before we even bring these petitions to you, we 
want you to know that we thank you today. We thank you that you're a God that's interested. You're a God that's concerned with the things that concern us. Oh, we thank you, Lord, for that. We thank you for how you've been working, for how you've been helping us. We don't want to fail to praise you, Lord. Our, our, uh, we want to send up our receipt of thank you for all that you've done. We want you to know that we thank you tonight for all that you're currently doing. Things maybe that, that we don't even understand that you're doing. And things that we're not aware that you are at work in. But Lord, we just want you to know. We want you to know that, 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 that we are grateful for what you've done. Oh, we thank you. Lord, we, we ask that you would come. Come in your own gentle way to do your work. You know every need that's been represented here tonight, spiritual needs and physical needs and financial needs, emotional, relational needs, Lord. There's none, there's no need that, that goes unnoticed tonight, or no situation that, that you're not concerned about, what you're concerned about, and so forth. We bring these needs to you tonight. And, Pray, oh God, that you would help us, that you would help uh, Dell and Betty's, the great nephew who's been deployed to Kuwait. We pray that you would help him and, uh, and Cody, uh, Sister Albertson's nephew as well, that you would help the Lord. We pray for Betty Lawson as she goes to the doctor. We pray for Brenda Cope and Henry Ab. We pray for Byron's dad who's facing some more tests to pet scan tomorrow, Lord. We're so thankful that you know and that you're able to work and so Lord, we're asking you that your will would be accomplished. And we pray for Sherry's family tonight, that you would encourage her and give her special help. Ken, Rufus, he's in the home that's had his physical concern. We pray that you would help them and Sister C's and Keith Hackle, Lord. All of these, Lord, you know every one of them that you're the Birch family and the Rains family and the loss of his loved one. We pray that you would wrap your arms around them and give them special help. Oh, Lord, we ask that you would come and do your work. Oh, Lord, come and do your work, I pray. Help us in this service tonight. You know the needs represented here. We pray that you would help us. David for leading us in prayer this evening. I wanted to mention, and probably should have done it a few moments ago, but it was such a delight to see Eliana Wilson on the piano tonight. So glad that she was uh, playing the piano and uh, using her talents for the Lord in that arena. And I know Brittany does that quite often over here on this piano, but I'm so glad Eliana was doing that. Well, let me mention just a couple of announcements uh, before we give you opportunity to, to testify tonight. But let me mention that this coming Saturday morning at 8 o'clock at Bob Evans, right off of Dream Dream Circle, or no, Dream, Dream Street and 42, right at the corner of Dream Street and, and 42, have the Men's Fellowship Breakfast at 8 o'clock. We'll look forward to your fellowship there. And uh, so uh, I encourage you to be there if at all possible. Let me also mention uh, a couple of other things uh, 
besides our regular service times. Next week, uh, on Tuesday evening, will be the Young Ladies Bible Study at 7 o'clock. And this time it will be at the Arinders Home in Cincinnati. So those of you who are involved with that, I want to let you know about that. On the 23rd is a membership meeting. That will be next Wednesday night following the service. And uh, you will want to remember that. Then we have been announcing for quite some time about the, uh, the March, the month of March being our friend and family month. And uh, so I want to continue to keep that in front of you so that you can be inviting. And uh, we, we just want this month to be a great time of welcoming new people into our church. And it doesn't have to be just people who live around here, but uh, we invite you to invite, we invite you to invite your family, maybe that lives out of town, haven't visited you for a while. We just want this to be a, a, a bustling place with new faces, and, but also a time where we can invite those around us, uh, neighbors and people you come in contact with at restaurants and so forth. And I know some of you are active. I know some of you are because I've seen it in action. And uh, so I want to thank you for that, but to encourage you to, to be a part of that. So if you need more, uh, if you've ran out of the, the postcards, there's more out there in the foyer on the table. And so uh, make sure you help yourself to that. While I'm mentioning uh, things out there, I also wanted to mention that I think Sister Winkler had brought a couple of um, ink cartridges for for some printers, and I know that you know you have to have the same uh, type printer for, or some of them may be compatible. But <clears throat> those cartridges out there on that table are free for the taking. If you happen to recognize that style of cartridge or whatever would work with yours, uh, she brought those so somebody could take them. And then let me mention out in the foyer on top of the, the coat rack, there are several things uh, that I would love to get rid of. And uh, I have itchy fingers. I'm going to get rid of them soon. And so if one of those umbrellas is yours or one of those dishes is yours, uh, make sure you take those. And uh, we'll maybe announce that again and then uh, take care of them somehow. In some way. Yes, this one. Okay, all right, so let's uh, be mindful of that. And if you, you can use those, that would be certainly fine with us. All right, well, we ought to have a few testimonies tonight, and uh, I have a devotional prepared, and I'm ready to give it whenever you're done testifying. So if you don't want to hear a devotional, you just testify all night, and I'll dispose of that. But we want you to, uh, to have opportunity to give God praise tonight. Wilson, your hand's up. Go right ahead. Uh, Marshall, I'm sorry. Go right ahead, Marshall. Hey, man, Marshall. All right, right here, Carrie. Hey, man, wonderful. All right, right back here. Hey, man, that's a good testimony. All right, we'll move this up. Go right ahead. Hey, man. All right, back here. Grayson? That's good, Grayson. All right, Lily. Hey, man, Lily. All right, right here. Where is it? Hey, man, that's not Chris, that's Kelsey. Oh, sorry about that, Kelsey. All right, who's next? These are good. These are good. Read that. Go ahead and have it. Oh, that's all right. <laughs> Go right ahead. <clears throat> Sing this chorus together. It's amazing what praising can do. 
Right, that's okay. <clears throat> I think Amy's about to blow a gasket. <laughs> I've been pretty quiet lately. I've just been uh, worshiping. Uh, and so uh, I'm not on the high, I'm not on the low. I'm just kind of smiling and talking. But uh, I love Jesus, and I'm so glad yeah, he's saving me and he sanctifies me. Let us grow. Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Nathan. Yes, for Martin. I'd like to praise the Lord. I was thinking back to the, this last seven days. I've been having a good week, a good week, and I thank the Lord for it. Yes. But the testimony is what He's done for me. Sure. So it was last week, and I had to order some uh, dietetic cat food for my cat. And after it had been, they, they acknowledged the order. And nine days later, it was still close processing. <laughs> I decided a phone call was in order. There was something just about these days online companies just don't take that long. And because it was dietetic, it needed a veterinary um, authorization, and they had a different kind of a process. They wanted to talk to somebody. Faxing it in was not sufficient. Yes, it is with all the others. So, but they have a lot of them. on the phone, the person said, let me make a call. And I made sure she had the right number and, you know, and got it authorized and it sent some luck. But I'm so, I'm, I've noticed this. God <coughs> wants to take us through our circumstances. Sure. 
I've noticed this about me, and maybe it's more than just me. He doesn't just fix things so we don't have any problems. Mm -hmm. He takes us through them. Yeah, sure. Mm -hmm. I'm so glad that we can go through in a sanctified state with a good attitude yes. and leave a, a message of blessing with the person who's on the other end. Yes. Where, where there, there may be calls, but we were able to we're able to show Christ yes. through yes, it. Sure. And then, included in this seven day, I wanted to file my income tax. They've been ready for quite a while, but I, I had to wait for the end of January because I had not gotten the, the, like the formal notice from the bank about getting, you know, the 2099 ID. And they had until the 31st to do that, and they did the time. And it still did come even in the third. So I, now I had told them that. And I think for all three examples, the grand total is less than five bucks. <laughs> We're not talking about two bucks. But, but I did not want to file my taxes without the 1099 included, you know, where the IRS would have gotten a copy. So I would just wait. So when I went to, I said, okay, I'm just going to go ahead without this. You know, because we were, we were in like a week of, of February. And, you know, that, it just wasn't worth fooling with. And TurboTax told me, well, we can't e file the state because you, you haven't provided all the social security numbers for the dependent children. The first I never had dependent children. <laughs> it's okay. You know, sorry that hasn't been the case. But um, it, and it turns out it's a known problem with TurboTax. We had to wait for the software update that would fix that. <laughs> Aren't we glad that we have a sanctified state that allows us to be patient, not to get upset, mm -hmm. just to understand there's a process. We don't, these things are out of our control. Yeah. Sure. It's, it's, it's not that we did something wrong. Mm -hmm. Any of it. It's not, it's, it's not because we just were careless. Things happen. Sure. And um, God has a state for us, for our hearts, sure. where carnality doesn't have to rule, it doesn't have to upset. And then, and then tonight, um, I was I got ready to come to the church, and Joyce isn't able to come. Now she's okay, except this morning when, when she woke up, she just didn't get her dose of energy for the day that, you know, when we're waking up. It just didn't happen. So she's she's okay. She's at home. She's able, but she's able to be safe, to be there alone. I can come on to church. And I'm, did I say that God wants to take us through our circumstances? Sure. And he wants us to do it with a good attitude. It's the same kind of state that gives us that. He wants us to do it with patience. He wants us to do it the, the, with the good attitude so we can come, we can testify to others, we can give testimony in church. Yes. We, can, we, we are free to be used by him because we're not all upset by the emotional, the strongness of things that just you know, happen to us. Sure. I love him tonight. Hey, that's yeah. my testimony. Right. He's helping. Yes. He's helping get us through. It really works. This thing yeah. about sanctification really works. Yes. It's good. Good. Get it. It really works. Praise God. And it doesn't mean that things won't happen. They do. Sure. Right. Right. And these are trivial things, of course, you know, compared to the thing that some people are facing. Some things, some of the prayer, prayer requests tonight were just awesome. You know, in grief, in grieving, and, and uh, other things, other concerns. But I'm, I'm glad to say that we've got a God who is able, who is capable, and who yes. has a great yes. desire and has wants to just help us to be the best we can and to be victorious through. I say praise his name. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Well, we ought to sing all week long, I've been with Jesus. It's been wonderful. <laughs> Amen. Praise God for the mind. All right, somebody else want to give God praise? Brother Mike. Randy, you bring me up. Yes, sir. But I'm behind on my testimony. I just appreciate what God has shown me through. Yes. Yes. Um, Praise God, Mike. Yes. Yes. Praise God. It has been times when I just felt like I was so far away. Mm -hmm. And I got to the point where I just had to fall down on my face and turn it over to God yes. and ask Him yes. Yes. to help me, help me to be the man that I need to be to serve Him, no matter what comes, yes. no matter what comes. Mm -hmm. 
end of my street, and when I got to the end of the street, well, when this paid leg of mine, I couldn't get things working. I couldn't find my brake. I couldn't do nothing. And I come up to the intersection, and I had to make a choice. Mm. Either try to get straight across the road and get T-boned, mm. or God made just enough room for me to whip in behind that car with the other one coming and get in the traffic. Now, I agree and Pat didn't know what was going on, but she kind of had her own two wheels. You know, so. <laughs> <laughs> yes, he does. And so he helped me to make the right choice. <clears throat> it was fast, and I had to do something, and I didn't want to have a wreck. So, so I thank you for that. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Amen. I thank you for forgiving my yes. sins. Yes. Yes, praise God. Coming into my heart and home. Yes, praise God. Making a big difference. Yes. God, you're never working at it. We're not going to give up. That's God, right. grace. Praise God. I'm not going to give up anything. Amen. 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 Throw away the strength. Amen. Just want to be worth it. Absolutely. Absolutely. <clears throat> praise the Lord.
know, he doesn't just like have to suddenly come up with an answer for us. And it's just so neat to realize how God already had an answer that he's been working on through a long time and here's the answer right now. So I'm just thankful that God cares about us and that he is still on the throne and he's still God and we're serving him and trusting him. Praise God. Amen. Thank you for that report of answered prayer. Oh my, thank God for his his help and victory. Amen. Praise the Lord. Somebody else. Maybe a couple times pray. this week I have um, asked the Lord for help and specifically in certain areas and I felt him, you know the scripture talks about how God directed the heart of the king mm -hmm. and I've, I've worked to pray for that before for you know political leaders and people who you feel like are in charge and you don't have a say with their decisions or anything and you can ask God to direct their hearts and I have felt God do that for me this week mm -hmm. and give me a or a direction of something that <clears throat> clarifies something for me. And um, I thought in my mind, Lord, if you can do that and direct my heart, mm. I know you're doing that all across mm. the board. Mm. You're doing that for every soul, how much he cares for every soul. Yeah. And um, if he would care about me and my little, little everyday decisions and things to direct me, um, how much is he working with the sinner and the person who's turning him away? And because he loves them so much, you know, he cares about my little insignificant decisions. That soul that's lost, how is he nudging them and yes. directing yes. the heart of that person? Yes. And, uh, so it just came to me. If God can do that, he can bring that to my mind. What is he bringing to everybody else's mm -hmm. mind? And I just you have faith that he is doing that in people's hearts that we're praying for. And maybe even a lawyer. People like that who have decisions to make and prayers are going up for them. Yes. God is able to yes. give people direction yes, and uh, talk to their souls. And I just want to thank you for what he's doing that we don't know. Because yes. um, yes. I have full confidence that he is. Yes. I want to thank him That's for that. Exactly right. Yes. Praise God. Amen. Oh, the things that we know are overwhelming, what he's doing. But thank right. God we don't know all he's doing that he is and we can give him praise for it. Amen. Right ahead. I'd just like to thank the Lord for the goodness over the last year was one of the difficultest years my brothers and I faced. We faced seven deaths in our family last year, but God's grace was more than sufficient to get us through it. Amen. Thank the Lord for what He's done in my life and my desire and determination to make those promises. Amen. Amen. Praise Amen. God. Praise the Lord. Good to have Anna here tonight. She's picking something, doing a good deed for a sibling of hers. Picking up something for her brother in this area. And uh, so good to have Anna here tonight. Anybody else want to give God praise? Before we change the order. I've been thinking about um, how God works through other people. I don't know if I would uh, say my testimony is thank God for human kindness. I'm sure it's the love of the Lord. But I think about three years ago in March. We had about 40 people helping us move to where we now live. Mm -hmm. And I think about the kindness of having been accepted in a strange land among uh, <laughs> people that we really didn't know very well. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's wonderful to have that kind of feeling about a church. And yes. uh, we appreciate that. Yes. And um, I can think of just some other little things along the way where the Lord can his care for us. Yes, yes. And um, the testimony of Sherilyn that helped our family a great deal. And um, yes. I found a little uh, something on my uh, in my kitchen left by a grandson, just a little folded origami thing. And uh, it had a little neat note on it. And I said, thank you, Lord. Sure. And um, picked up the phone and got a text from someone we went to college with 50 years ago and, mm -hmm. and just uh, thanking God for friendship and care and that person has a very heavy load and uh, took the time to talk to us and uh, we had a strange uh, and interesting thing happen. We happened to go to Golden Corral. You can tell I like food. <laughs> um, <coughs> But um, we 
we were in line and I got my wallet out to pay and the clerk said, someone back there has already paid, or she didn't say where, she said someone's already paid for your meal and I thought, okay. And I don't know, we were having a low day that day and it just, it just hit me. Uh, we didn't need help financially. We didn't need someone to do that, but it was just God showing us kindness. And so often those little things that we, you know, we may do them ourselves and we don't really think they have much impact, but there's uh, more impact than we know. That's exactly us. right. And, uh, thank God for all the encouragements yes. and prayers and testimonies and notes. Um, God really cares and He shows them through to me. Praise God. <clears throat> So true. So true. And may that be a, a prompting for all of us as we hear that testimony of how God used those things to, uh, to encourage. Maybe that we could use that as just a little encouragement to do, the, do that for others. And uh, you never know when you're prompted uh, to send a text or, or a meal or any of those things can seem... Um, so, so small and yet be so huge on the other end. And uh, so don't ever ignore those promptings. Amen. Our neighbors were tremendously impressed by the group of people that helped us move. <laughs> One of our neighbors said, I have never seen anything like that. <laughs> <laughs> oh my. Well, we, we, are a, uh, we are a walking billboard, aren't we? Yeah. A walking billboard for God. And say the right things. Yeah. All right. Anybody else? Let me give God praise. All right. Well, if you have your Bibles, we are going to end up in Ephesians, at least part of the time tonight, in Ephesians chapter 6. <clears throat> I think it would be it would be safe to say that as much as things change in this life there is an equal amount of things that don't. Yeah, go ahead and say amen. <laughs> Well, electronics change, but they will always be unreliable. <laughs> At some point or another. Not every time you use them, but... Medicinal practices change. Oh, aren't we grateful that they have changed and developed over the last few years? But there will always be the need for them. Seasons change, at least here in Kentucky. But their rotation never does. Man's needs will always change. But there will always be a supply. In thinking of the devotional for tonight, my heart and mind turned toward the thought of depleted and then restored strength. How many of you would really focus on this lesson? You would sit up and, and take notes if you thought I could tell you how to have extra strength, not, not Tylenol, but extra strength for your life. How many would just sit up and take notes? <clears throat> some of you would, but some of you are too tired to listen. <laughs> I get it. I've been there too. Well, let, let's start with some encouraging news, all right? Let's start with some encouragement. You are not alone if you have depleted strength tonight. Isn't there, there's something about comfort in numbers. Uh, when you realize that you're facing the same thing somebody else is. or Something of that nature. There's comfort in numbers. So maybe that's a little encouraging for somebody. How many, <clears throat> let, let's, let's do a little activity here. How many would raise your hand? If you think Noah ever got tired of building the boat during the hundred years or so that he lived, <laughs> all right, raise your hand 
if you think that Moses was ever tired of dealing with the children of Israel. Okay. One more time. Raise your hand if you think Paul was ever tired on his missionary journeys. Now you're tired of raising your hands. <laughs> the truth of the matter is, there is not one example from Scripture who didn't have their strength depleted. Now you're thinking, aren't you? I don't care what random name you pull out of the genealogies, Huz or his brother Buzz. <laughs> Pethahiah or Eliphalet. I just read those recently in Ezra. I don't care who you pulled out. They all faced weariness. They all faced exhaustion. We are not unique to weariness. I, I think we understand tonight that, that there is more than one kind of weariness, right? There is certainly physical weariness. Every day our... Our strength wanes as we meet our responsibilities, the demands that life throws our direction. We can also observe emotional or mental weariness. This, this depletion of strength comes as your responsibilities involve more than just manual labor. Um, this kind of exhaustion is present when you, when you exert a mental labor, such as overseeing a, a, a project or the day-to-day -day instruction of children or guiding an organization. That's the day-to-day -day mental uh, pressures, emotional weariness. And certainly there's also spiritual weariness. Scripture reminds us, let us not be weary in well-doing. One author paraphrased that by saying, let's not allow ourselves to get fatigued doing good. The implication is we can, and the reality is we do face spiritual weariness. And in thinking of these different types of weariness, I wouldn't be a bit surprised when an individual is faced with two or more of these at the same time. We could think of, of these examples that I've just mentioned in Scripture tonight. I wouldn't be a bit surprised if, if Noah was not only physically exhausted. I mean, imagine showing up to build anything without power tools these days. But I, I could also imagine Noah getting a little weary spiritually. The Bible tells us that Noah was a preacher of righteousness. That meant he had to prepare the sermons means he had to deliver the sermons and nobody was really listening to his sermons. Don't you think the devil challenged his faith just a little bit during his time? Fought him for doing what he knew he was supposed to be doing? I mean, think about your own life. Think about maybe your past or maybe even the present. And, and you think about where you, you were doing something you knew that God had wanted you to do. God is expecting you to do. Have you faced any weariness doing that? Here's Noah doing the same thing God asked him to do for 100 years. Sure, he faced spiritual weariness. I'm confident Moses faced physical exhaustion. You remember he couldn't even keep his hands up during the long battle. He had to have somebody hold up his hands. And additionally, his responsibilities as a leader over the people of Israel, oh, you talk about mental weariness and emotional weariness. In fact, God developed a system. I can't remember where it is at in Scripture, but, but God developed a system where he organized people that would come and hear the concerns. And You remember that? Think about the weariness that Moses had. Then there's Paul. You can't read the book of Acts without knowing Paul had to be worn out with physical exhaustion and all that he had done. Then you read in, I think it's in 2 Corinthians, he, or, or maybe it's uh, one of the Corinthians letters. He writes about the list of perils. You remember that? that he, all that he went through. And then after that huge list of perils, then he says, then the care of all of the churches. 
mental exhaustion that must have been. And of course, in it all, while he challenged us to not be weary in well-doing in Galatians chapter 6, he was no doubt writing, having had first-hand experience himself, of spiritual exhaustion. As for Huzz and Buzz, I don't know enough about their life to give details. <laughs> but I know they suffered from depleted strength. So as I think about us here tonight, I know that you're facing one, at least one, potentially all three of these types of weariness. Thankfully, it's not a sin to be weary. As a human, it's natural to get physically exhausted. Up early, up late, working hard, busy schedules, always something that needs done around the house. We all know what this is like. The amount of sleep is seemingly barely enough to keep the cycle going. As a leader, a parent, a boss, there's emotional exhaustion Make the phone call, answer the email, delegate the assignment. Plans that need implemented, questions that need answered. How many parents have, have answered over and over how many questions? It's always something that seemingly keeps the mental exhaustion at critical levels. It's, it's always like we're, we're almost always ready to blow a gasket. It seems. Then as Christians, we face spiritual weariness. Helping others. <clears throat> living counter to culture, standing for truth, resisting temptation, fulfilling our commitment to teach or drive the bus, keeping our eyes on Jesus. All of these things are, are activities that step on the enemy's turf. And so when we do these things, he wants to... He wants, us to be weary of doing those things. He wants to make us weary in doing well. <clears throat> it's, it's very fascinating to me that when life wears us down physically and emotionally, the first thing the devil suggests for us to do is give up spiritual things. And now, the devil won't tell you, go to bed earlier. The devil's not going to tell you, quit working so much overtime. If you're stressed out, quit doing that. He's not going to say, you know, if you just organize your schedule a little better, I think you'll have time to teach the Sunday school class. He's not going to say, you know, why don't you eliminate this time waster from your life? And your spiritual life will do much better. <laughs> no, he, he does the other. He, he, he suggests you get rid of the spiritual things first. Why don't, why don't you quit being so involved at church? Why don't you just skip prayer? Why don't you stop living like you've always lived? And really, all it is, friends, is an effort to get you weary in doing what is good and right. I doubt I'm off in left field with all of this. But listen, when these multiple weariness invade the soul, there is the potential in it, the recipe for giving up. So what's the answer? Y'all come to prayer meeting and you want something a little more encouraging than that. <laughs> What's the answer for physical and emotional weariness? Well, to be honest, aside from a few suggestions and maybe keeping the devotional short, I'm not sure I can be much help with either of those. Mm -hmm. But maybe I would suggest you assess your life. What's the answer for physical and emotional weariness? I would suggest you assess your life from God's point of view. The chorus says, with eternity's values in view, may I do each day's work for Jesus with eternity's values in view. By looking at our life through that lens, we may 
hear the voice of the Lord instructing us in ways we need to make some adjustments that could help us in the physical and emotional weariness that we're experiencing. Again, it's weariness is a sin. Thank God it's not. It's natural. It's human. But there may be some things that God could help you work through to say, you know what, this could really help you from being so exhausted. And then as we walk with the Lord, as we, as we take those things to heart and apply them, he also gives us promises, doesn't he? I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Or fear thou not, for I am with thee. Be not dismayed, for I am thy God. I will what? Strengthen thee. You say, what about spiritual weariness? Maybe scripture could give us some help with the spiritual weariness we are experiencing. We know what the answer isn't, right? We know that we're not to give in to spiritual exhaustion. We are not to, to just lay down and say, boy, I've had enough of that. That, that was too hard for me. No. We are to resist the temptation to lay down and give up. Now, we, know, we do understand that the, the battle changes in intensity. Anybody recognize that? There are some times when the battle is raging and, and, and then there are other times when maybe it doesn't seem like the enemy's quite on our heels. Now, don't forget, he's always there. But the intensity in the battle changes. And not only that, but, uh, but our strength may rise and fall with that intensity change. The battle is really strong and we've been, we've been fighting hard and you know, our strength may get depleted at times in those. And then, then when things may be given a little, maybe our, our strength goes up. And I'm not sure really that we we ever fully, fully overcome spiritual exhaustion because of the nature of the fight. The enemy is relentless. He's pursuing us. He, he doesn't want us making spiritual progress. So I'm not sure we ever fully overcome spiritual exhaustion. That strength comes and goes. But in closing, let me give you five words to help you resist spiritual exhaustion. I think they could all be supported by other scriptures, but... But I think we can find them in Ephesians chapter 6. The first word is the word stand. And spiritual exhaustion and weariness is the lot of your life. Stand. Look at verse 11. Put on the whole armor of God that ye may be able to, help me out, stand against the wiles of the devil. Look at verse 13. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day and having done all to stand. Verse 14 starts, stand. stand therefore. Well, what does stand mean? Does it mean to lay down? Does it mean to quit? Oh, when the battle is raging and the strength is almost gone, stand. Fight. The second word is fight. Look at verse number 12. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. The word fight's not there, but I think it's understood. We're, we're, we're fighting a spiritual warfare here. He goes on to talk about, <clears throat> about the, uh, what a soldier wears. What is it? It's a fight. We're engaging in warfare. So when the battle is raging, don't quit fighting. When you're tired, don't quit fighting. We keep fighting. The third word is pray. Look at verse number 18. Praying always. With all prayer and supplication in the spirit. Fourth word is watch. Look at verse 18 again. Praying always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit. And watching. Well something that's going to help us. In the fight. Is prepared. Be on the lookout. Keeping our eyes out for anything that's going to keep us. 
things that were going to keep us or to trip us up. Fifth word is endure, verse number 18 as well. Watching thereunto with all perseverance. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> no one said that this was going to be easy. Oh, thank God, one of these days we're going to lay it all down. We're going to turn in our, our sword and our breastplate of righteousness. And we're going to enjoy, enjoy the no fight. But until then, we're going to have to fight. We're going to have to watch. We're going to have to endure until the end. And in it all, we have these promises. They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. We have the promise that, that the Lord gave to the Apostle Paul. He says, My grace is sufficient for thee, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. So what does Paul say in response to that? He says, I take pleasure in infirmities and in reproaches and necessities and persecutions and distresses for Christ's sake. For when I am weak, then am I strong. So tonight in your spiritual exhaustion, stand, fight, pray, watch, endure, and allow God to continue to be your strength. Mm -hmm. He promised to strengthen us with might in the inner man. We don't have to just live with depleted strength. He continues to give us strength as the needs are demanded. Don't give up in well-doing for in due season. We shall reap if we faint not. That's right. Are you weary? Are you heavy hearted? Isn't that what the chorus says? Tell it to Jesus. Tell it to Jesus alone. Well, tonight, if you're facing one of these exhaustions, tell it to Jesus. Tell it to Jesus. He is a friend that's well known. And I believe he'll help you. He'll be able to help you in those physical, emotional, exhaustion areas, things maybe you can adjust your schedule to make you not quite so physically and emotionally exhausted. Things, I, you know, I know that, that there are the demands of life. I understand that. We can't get away from the demands of life. But there might be something the Lord could use to help you in those areas. But I know tonight, for those of us, all of us have that spiritual weariness, whether it's whether, it's, whether we're on, almost on empty or, or maybe the battle's not so hot and maybe we feel like the Lord's helping us in a certain area we have a little strength right now. I don't know where you are, but I want you to know that He is the source of strength. You know, you read the story of Nehemiah and Nehemiah worked hard. He's another one that I thought about asking. How many ever think that Nehemiah worked hard? But what does the book of Nehemiah say? The joy of the Lord is my strength. Oh, thank God that it is. Let's stand together. <clears throat> well, let's do something a little out of the ordinary. Let's sing the joy of the Lord is my strength as we go. <clears throat> the joy of the Lord is my strength. The joy of the Lord is my strength. The joy of the thank you for this time together praying together and singing together studying your word together worshiping together thank you for this time thank you for every heart that is here you know those tonight who may be facing extreme exhaustion in ways that none of no 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 one else recognizes or knows lord i pray that you will be their source of strength tonight and we'll give you praise in jesus name amen you are dismissed god Thank you.